Hello students, welcome back to our paper CHO5401 that is a chemistry of natural product. Today we are going to discuss the synthesis of cephalosporin. Friends, cephalosporins are the class of beta lactam antibiotic originally derived from the fungus acrimonium. But previously this fungus is known as cephalosporin. Due to the name of this fungus, the compound is named as cephalosporin. So there are different types of derivatives of cephalosporin. So we are uh, particularly discussing the cephalosporin C by the RB Woodward. So cephalosporins are indicated for the prophylaxis and the treatment of infections caused by the bacteria susceptible to this particular form of antibiotic. Friends, in 1966, RB Woodward and co-worker published this work in a journal of American Chemical Society, page number 852, uh, volume number 88. So, this molecule is synthesized in 19 different steps in three different parts. So, we have parallel synthesis to get the cephalosporin over here. Just before a publication of this molecule, in 1965, Professor R. B. Woodward get the Nobel Prize for his work in chemistry. So let's see how R.B. Woodward and co-worker uh, perform the synthesis of cephalosporin. Retrosynthesis suggests that R.B. Woodward and co-worker divided this molecule in three different kinds of intermediate. So R.B. Woodward and co-worker first prepared this beta lactam containing compound, then secondly this ester and then condensation will give us a molecule which was then attached by this side chain. So this is how the cephalosporin is synthesized in 19 different steps. So let's see the first step. So you can see the first molecule or first starting material is 2,2-dimethyl thiazolidine 4 carboxylic acid. So friends, don't confuse with this molecule. It is just a acetal protected form of our L-cysteine amino acid. So L-cysteine, you know that it contains SH and NH2 which was treated with the H plus and acetone to get the acetyl protection over here and then COH is as it is over here. The next step is treatment of phosgene that is a CO, Cl2 and then chloroform and tertiary butanol. So how the phosgene and tertiary butanol convert this NH to the n box? let's see. As you can see, the structure of uh, phosgene is a COCl2. So, the NH will attack over this carbonyl and one Cl will be removed as a leaving group. So, NH will be now NCOCl and then this tertiary butanol will attack over here and another Cl will removed as a leaving group. So, now we get N, then CO, O and tertiary butyl. So this is nothing but Bok. So this is how the Bok protection is achieved for our first step. Now friends, let's go for the second step. Second step is methylation using this diazomethane. As previously in the 1960s and 70s, diazomethane is one of the <coughs> commonly used compound for the methylation of acids. But due to its explosive nature, Nowadays, we don't use the diazomethane. Once we get uh, the methylation or, or ester formation, then the next step is treatment with the dimethyl azo dicarboxylate. So, this dimethyl azo carboxylate will react with our molecule at this position and then we get hydrazo diester like this. Now, this hydrazo diester is oxidized with the lead tetraacetate to <coughs> OAC or acetate in the reflux form of benzene. So uh, the compound is reflexed in benzene for two hours. We get this OAC group over here in presence of lead tetraacetate. Now simple hydrolysis of this ester or acetate group uh, in presence of sodium acetate that is mild condition will give us this free OH. The 
stereochemistry over is uh, is trans so this uh, trans oh and coh then treated with the uh, mscl that is a methyl sulfonyl chloride and isopropyl ethyl amine so friends this mscl will convert this oh to the ems so that is methyl sulfonyl group will be added over here and this oh will now become a good living group now we have this nan3 reaction which will convert this trans intermediate into the cis uh, diazo compound now this cis diazo compound is reduced with the aluminum amalgam to this amine so we now get the cis amino ester group over here so this cis amino ester compound now treated with the <coughs> tri isobutyl aluminum to form the beta lactam ring so this nh will attack over here and ome will be a living group so we get this kind of cis beta lactam compound so friends this is a first part among the three part so hopefully you uh, understood up to here now let's see the second part so second part is very easy looks easy so it only have three step so the starting material for the second part is a tartaric acid so treatment with the paratoline sulfonic acid and trichloroethanol so this is a 222 trichloroethanol so as you know we have ethanol in presence of acid this acid the carboxylic acid will converted to this di trichloroethyl tartarate that means the esterification is happen over here this esterification is known as fischer spiral esterification now the next step is treatment with the oxidant called as sodium meta peridate that is a nao4 this is a sodium meta peridate in presence of dilute methanol or i will say h2 and methanol so what will happen this will oxidize it to this trichloroethyl glyoxylate hydrate okay it will oxidize over here and we get oh oh over here and like a uh, glycol uh, group okay so we have trichloroethyl glycolate hydrate compound now this compound is treated with the sodium salt of malonidialdehyde so don't confuse between uh, malonidialdehyde it is a maloni maloni dialdehyde so how this looks like it is simple cho a cho group attached to this ch2 group so sometime it is in the form of this enol okay and this is uh, now we are seeing over here this is sodium salt of this malon dialdehyde so malon dialdehyde sodium salt when react with this like a noangel condensation as noangel condition you know that it is a condensation between a uh, active methylene compound and aldehyde so this is a protected form of aldehyde so this aldehyde part and now this is a active methylene part will react together to form this kind of product which is a uh, part to product so i hope you understood up to here so very simple uh, noangel condensation reaction will give us this part two now third and final part which is very very important because we have condensation between the part one molecule and part two molecule in part third so first step is a simple michael addition reaction as you know that we have <coughs> alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes over here this is the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde now uh, in michael addition reaction this nh will attack on the beta carbon or at four position and we get this kind of one four michael adduct or michael addition product over here now this nh will attach to this beta carbon now the next step is very important and i think uh, you will understand it better because the next step is treatment of trifluoroacetic acid now two things happen in this reaction first this is a bock and acetyl deprotection now after bock and acetyl deprotection we get nh2 over here 
SH over here. Okay, this first step I think deprotection. Now what is second step? Second step is attack of this SH over one of this CHO group. So this will uh, leave us the minus H2 or dehydration and we again get this double bond o over here, carbon carbon double bond over here and that is alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde over here. This step is very important. First is deprotection and then condensation between SH, this thiol and aldehyde to form this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde group. Okay friends, so in this reaction, this kind of impurities are also observed uh, <coughs> yeah, in the synthesis. So, so uh, RB Woodward reported this kind of impurity after this reaction. So our desired product is over here. This desired product is now coupled with our side chain. This is our side chain over here in which NH is uh, truck protected. Okay. So we have two COOH group over here and here. The DCC coupling will uh, definitely uh, condense this COOH group with this NH2 but the less hindered COOH group that is this one is <coughs> reacted with our NH and this amide is formed. Of course this impurity is also formed over uh, shown uh, in this reaction but the desired amide compound is over here. Now this amide compound is carried for the next reaction that is a DCC and again this trichloro 222 trichloroethanol reaction. Now ethanol, alcohol and acid will again couple together to form ester group. Let's see how it looks like. Now this COH I will show you again over here. This COH group is now esterified with this alcohol. So we can see here we get this kind of <coughs> ester over here. Friends, now as we protected this acid, this aldehyde group was reduced to CH2OH that is a primary alcohol with the help of borohydrate reduction that is a BH3 pH of hydroboration reduction is carried out to reduce this CHO to this <coughs> alcohol okay the BH3 reduction of this CHO to the CH2OH or aldehyde is converted to primary alcohol. Now this alcoholic OH group is protected or isolated with the help of acetic anhydride. So we get OAC over here. Now the final step to reach our cephalosporin is just the truck deprotection and finally the ester hydrolysis. This was simply achieved by the reflux or I will say uh, zero degree reaction of zinc and acetic acid. So zinc and acetic acid will deprotect this NH as well as it will hydrolyze this ester to give us our final product known as cephalosporin C1. So this is our final product cephalosporin C1. This typical synthesis is published by R.B. Woodward, the great organic chemist in 1966. I hope you understood this total synthesis. If you guys have any problem with this total synthesis, feel free to ask me. Thank you very much.